Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this channel ad-free. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike. Today we're taking a look at this ink. This is Rotten Seaweed from Birmingham Pen Co. This is my label. They don't label the boxes. I imagine that would be very time consuming. And uh, so a lot of people have different ways of labeling boxes. Some people swab the ink onto the lid. Some people write it on the uh, wherever. I tend to put a, you know, one of those on there because it looks better than my handwriting. All right, let's get in here and look at the bottle. This is a 30 mil bottle of ink. They are glass. I believe you can get a larger size bottle. This is the one I always go for. It seems like a good, an ounce of ink is plenty of ink for me, uh, any particular color. This is says writing ink, rotten seaweed, Birmingham Pin Co., Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. On the side, 30 mils, manufactured and bottled by hand, crisp formula fountain pen ink made in the USA. These are made by Birmingham Pin Co., which is pretty cool. They brought all their ink production in-house, uh, I don't know, a while ago, a year or so? I, what is time, right? Uh, so these are made by them, and they have several different formulas. The crisp, crisp formula is made to write on all kinds of papers and with all kinds of nibs and, and you know, work very handily. The swift formula tends to be uh, a much wetter ink and it tends to dry more quickly, it seems, like it really soaks into the paper. Uh, and then you've got the rich formula, which is heavily saturated and has a whole lot of sheen to it and that sort of thing. I've only got one from that series, but it's pretty good. I have a bunch from this crisp formula uh, and uh, I like them pretty well to like varying degrees. This one is a nice green color, as we can see here in the lid. Kind of a swampy green. You know, I love that kind of weirdo color. In fact, these all live in the weirdo green brown area of my of my color decks. I uh, I like the bottle quite a bit for these. I think it's a, a good bottle. It used to have a little story on the side about each ink, but they've stopped doing that, and I kind of miss them, frankly. The opening is nice and big. Whatever pin you want to put in here will go in there. It's pretty deep though, so you're gonna you know probably want to syringe out the last few mils, but you know whatever. Good bottle. All right. Here's what it looks like on some paper. This is my usual 80 grams per square meter Rhodia paper. It's a nice bright white, and it's what I use for my reviews. Uh, it should be easily available for you as well, so you can get good comparisons and that sort of thing. Here's what the swatch looks like, and it's uh, it's an interesting looking swatch. You can see some shading in there. It's uh, no sheen on this ink, of course. It's not that sort of thing. Uh, it's a it's an interesting ink, and I like the color quite a bit. Uh, I've said the flow here is pretty wet and it dries quickly, which is true. It uh, does dry very quickly, even on Rhodia. You're not going to have this one sitting around on top uh, waiting to smear on you. Uh, I have uh, used it on some 20-pound paper, and I got some minor feather and bleed on the 20-pound paper. You can see this is uh, this line right here, obviously, um, which is 30% recycled 20 pound copy paper. And um, it's medium, it's medium okay on this paper. It seems to want to spread a bit. You get a little bit of feathering here and there on this paper. Not a huge amount or anything, but some down here in the staples and stuff. But this paper is really bad paper, so that's not a huge surprise. This is ballpoint paper for sure. But uh, just a little bit of bleed, not too much. It behaved itself pretty well. And this was with a medium nib medium nib on this pen, which is a shown design engineered plastic Altem pen. I really like Altem as a material. It feels great in the hand and, uh, you know, it kind of matches this ink. Like it's got that same kind of, it's got a weird color to it, just like the ink does. I dig that. I've had in this pen since I think December of 2021. Uh, December, no, October of 2021, according to my ink journal. And uh, I've liked it in here. I've refilled it quite a few times. Uh, this is a medium Yovo nib, very reliable and uh, sort of, you know, medium overall nib for testing out inks. So good stuff. Um, qualities, shading. You get a little bit of shading on this ink, not a huge amount but I'd say a fair amount. You can see it in all of the writing there from this medium nib. You're not really gonna see that on, for example, this paper because it just soaks up the ink too quickly. And so it's pretty much, uh, it's pretty uniform on this paper. All right. Uh, let's see, what else? All right, so comments. I really like the color of this ink. I think it's a great color. It's a weird shade of green. It lives in my weirdo green browns area of my color decks. That's, that's this one, weirdo green browns. All kinds of weirdo green browns in here. It's a color, it's a color uh, palette that I, I really like. So uh, we'll look at some comparable inks here in just a little bit. It um, does have some feather and spread on low end copy, copy paper like I showed. And it does have like a little bit of a little bit of bleed through here and there, even on Rhodia. It's not much, but occasionally you'll hit a spot that will give you a little bit of feather or um, like uh, like up in 
up in here you get a little bit of feather it's not much but it's weird for rhodia you know it's, it's kind of strange but you never know how these things are going to react pens paper and ink so it's it's not my favorite performance i wish it was a little bit better in performance but the color is really cool so it's definitely got that going for it and the ink is inexpensive at 13 bucks for a 30 mil bottle and often on sale i think i bought these on a sale and i feel like it was like nine bucks and at nine bucks like absolutely right i bought several bottles at nine dollars because i wanted to give them a try okay so let's do the water test we'll take a look at it on some other papers and we'll look at the chromatography and some color comparisons Yeah. I'm not really sure what to expect from this ink. It doesn't look like it's moving around much, which is pretty cool. I wasn't expecting it to have any water resistant qualities, but you never know. Let's go ahead and mop it up. <laughs> you gotta you can see where the grid was on there, but not a huge amount is coming up. And yeah, actually a lot of it stayed behind. This is pretty good. This is better than expected. So that's neat. I like it when it's better than expected. It definitely lost a lot of the green character, but this gray that stayed behind is actually really nice. That's super usable. I think if I spilled my coffee on this, I'd be able to recover all the words. I'm going to go ahead and say this is a little bit water resistant. Not the green, but this gray component underneath. That's pretty cool. I like that. So uh, if you get your seaweed wet, it will, uh, it will rot away to gray, which is, you know, perfectly good. All right. So here's what the chromatography looks like. And this one, lots of gray. I was kind of, this is kind of what I was expecting. Um, there is a lot of gray component in this ink, which I wasn't really expecting. And a little bit of like purple and then this bright green, which we saw washed away immediately. That also moved right up this uh, little bit of coffee filter that I use for chromatography. So pretty nice and plenty left over here where it started. So good job, Rotten Seaweed. I like that. All right, let's look at it in a couple of other papers. Firstly, we have our Tomoe River ink journal. <laughs> I have I have finished this ink journal. And here is the Rotten Seaweed entry. You can see it's right above Mont Blanc Swift. Uh, Mont Blanc uh, Swift was a, an old limited edition. And it's also in this kind of murky green category. But you can see Rotten Seaweed is much... Um, uh, much brighter. I've been watching some of this show alone, and it looks like the bull kelp that they're constantly eating because it washes up on the beach and uh, is apparently delicious if you are out in the wilderness. So, rotten seaweed. Don't eat it rotten. Eat it more fresh if you can eat seaweed, I think. But, looks good on Tamoy River. I like that quality. And, of course, you're not going to get any bleed or spread or feather or anything on Tamoy River. It's great on this paper. Looks really good. Totally readable, too, even though it's a little bit on the light side. This is my Inky Fingers Currently Inked book. I believe you can still get these from Van S. Pens, and this uses a wheat straw paper that uh, I like quite a lot. Here is the entry for this one. And uh, as you can see on here, I think it looks a little bit less. It's not quite as good as it looked on the Tamoy River, but I think it still looks pretty darn good. It doesn't have any bleeding or feathering or spreading on here. This paper is really good for fountain pens as well. Uh, you do see more uh, more shading here than you saw on some of the other papers. So yeah, looks uh, looks pretty good here. All right, so some color comparisons. There's the Colodex card right there, Birmingham Pinko, a rotten seaweed. Uh, 2021 is when I got this one. Uh, here is Birmingham Pinko's Stormwater Runoff, which is another weird name, uh, <laughs> weird name ink that I reviewed a little, little while ago. And uh, I, I like both of these. I think I like this color a little bit better, actually. Oh, that that's a pretty solid match for that Altem. All right. So Birmingham Pinko Stormwater Runoff, not that close, but pretty cool anyway. Uh, Bunga Box 88 Green Tea is much more yellow than Rotten Seaweed is. Not a good match. And I've got uh, Diamine Music Series Wagner, which uh, I really like this one a lot. This is a good looking color, but again, more yellow. This is closer to... Uh, closer to green tea than, than it is to, to seaweed. Then Deatramentis. I don't get a whole lot of Deatramentis ink. I need to try one of these out again soon. This is again more in the yellow, more in the yellow vein. Let's get to some that uh, are closer. This is getting even closer. This is Kerbal Maker Kelp Tea. Uh, it's got kelp in the names. So I'm like, yeah, let's try this out. Why not? And it's got some of the same character, but this has so many things going on here. This is a multi chrome ink that's got fairly. Uh, like it's got an interesting saturation and like a weird color tone to it, but uh, it's kelp, kind of like seaweed. 
<laughs> I mean, kelp is a seaweed, right? Then there's Robert Oster Penchalet Saguaro Green, which is getting very close. I think this is more, it has more of a bright green tone to it, especially around the edges, but the center really looks a lot, a lot alike, right? Then lastly, IWI Waking uh, Colors of Nature Waking of Insects, which is pretty close. It's a bit lighter, I think, than uh, Rotten Seaweed is, but pretty close in terms of color tone. I think these are, I think these are the closest, these three. So if you're looking for something that is uh, kind of like this, but subtly different, I would go with, uh, go with one of these or rod and seaweed these are all these are all pretty good okay all right thanks very much for watching this review i hope you have had a good time if so hit that like button and even more hit that subscribe button uh and uh you know uh, catch more videos on this channel thanks uh to birmingham pinko for making cool inks i bought these uh with money so thank you very much to patrons on my patreon for uh for supporting me in these endeavors and i will see y'all in the next video peace out